Hamilton the Musical came out at just the right time in American history. Obama was the president. He was the first black president that we've ever had in a history of 250 years of white presidents. Because of this, the musical made millions. It won the 2016 Tony Award for the best musical, and it actually also won the 2016 Pulitzer Prize. So is this really the greatest musical of the 21st century, or did it just come out at the right time? Well, I think it's a combination of both. But first, let's get into the historical background of these characters. We'll also get into sorting a little bit of fact from fiction. Let's talk about Alexander Hamilton himself first. Hamilton was born out of wedlock in 1755 or 57, historians are actually not that sure, to a half-British, half-French Huguenot woman and a Scottish man. Hamilton's mother was listed as white on tax rolls. There's been some debate as to whether she was mixed. He joined the army in 1775 and was later a part of General George Washington's staff, becoming his aide and attaining the rank of lieutenant colonel. He served as Washington's aide for four years, and while doing so, he became friends with the Marquis de Lafayette and John Lawrence. Hamilton married Elizabeth Schuyler in 1780, and they had eight children, one of whom, Philip, died in a duel, just as his father would three years later. He had an affair, which he later publicized. Hamilton died in 1804. He's generally regarded as an astute and intellectually brilliant politician and financier, if often a little bit impetuous. His ideas are credited with laying the foundation for American government and finance. Another one of the main characters of Hamilton is the Marquis de Lafayette. He was a member of the French aristocracy and is known for helping the Americans fight the American Revolutionary War. He also served in the French Revolution, and he even helped write the Declaration of the Rights of Man. He was later captured by Austrians and put into prison for five years, and he was later released by Napoleon in 1797. Lafayette was the first person granted an honorary U.S. citizenship. Hercules Mulligan was actually Irish-American. He was a tailor known for being a spy. His ideas on American independence from the British strongly influenced the young Alexander. John Lawrence died very young at the age of only 27. He was a soldier and a statesman from South Carolina best known for his strong criticism against slavery and trying to recruit slaves to fight for their freedom. He was killed in battle in August of 1782. Aaron Burr, the man who shot Hamilton, was an American politician and lawyer and the third vice president of the United States. He served as a Continental Army officer during the American Revolutionary War. He was also elected twice to the New York State Assembly and was appointed Attorney General of New York. He was also chosen as a U.S. Senator from the state of New York. He was a campaign manager for the Democratic Republic Party during the presidential election of the 1800s, and he was responsible for the first open public political campaign in the United States. After he killed Alexander Hamilton in the duel of 1804, he was actually never tried for this duel, despite it being illegal and all charges against him were eventually dropped. But the death of Alexander pretty much ended Burr's career. He left Washington and eventually went to Europe to avoid charges of treason. He remained overseas until 1812, then went back to the US to New York City to practice law, and he spent the rest of his life there in relative obscurity. The story of Hamilton the Musical builds to the event of the duel like a great grand tragedy just like a greek tragedy where these two men who were once friends feel as if they have no choice but to kill each other and even though alexander was the one who died burr was also destroyed before the duel hamilton said of burr quote there is nothing in his favor his private character is not defended by his most partial friends. He is bankrupt beyond redemption, except by the plunder of his country. His public principles have no other spring than his own aggrandizement. 
If he can, he will certainly disturb our institutions to secure his personal power and with it, wealth. <laughs> King George III is known as the Mad King who lost America. Close to the end of his 59-year reign, which was longer than any of his predecessors, he became incredibly ill. He could barely see and had horrible rheumatism in his legs. By the end of 1811, he was declared permanently insane and was resigned to live in seclusion for the rest of his life. He eventually became completely blind and almost totally deaf. He was completely unaware that he had been declared King of Hanover in 1814 and in 1818 had no idea that his wife had died. In Christmas of 1819, it is said that he spoke complete nonsense for 58 hours straight. In the weeks leading up to his death, he was completely unable to walk. Modern historians believed he suffered from severe bipolar disorder, along with other physical illnesses. So why are the actors who play these characters not the same color as the actual historical figures? Lynn manuel says, quote, Our cast looks like Americans look now, and that's certainly intentional. It's a way of pulling you into the story and allowing you to leave whatever cultural baggage you have about the Founding Fathers at the door. We're telling the story of old, dead white men, but we're using actors of color. And that makes the story more immediate and accessible to contemporary audiences. This musical most certainly came out of the times that it was written in. There's been a lot of social and political upheaval, fights for racial equality, illegal and undocumented citizens, women's rights, so on and so forth during this time. So this musical is most definitely a musical for our generation. A huge and important theme in this musical is the idea of immigrants. There's actually a quote in the show that Alexander and other characters say directly to the audience, immigrants, we get the job done. Even though Alexander Hamilton is historically seen as a white person, his immigration status is referred to a lot throughout the show, alongside the virtue and prowess of Hamilton. A quote from the show is, by working a lot harder and being a lot smarter by being a self-starter. This is described in the show's opening. Lin-Manuel Miranda is trying to foster a positive image of immigrants in his show. Along with this, he casts Black, Latino, and Asian Americans as leads. Quote, Hamilton is a story about America, and the most beautiful thing about it is, it's told by such a diverse cast, such diverse styles of music. That was quoted by Renee Elise Goldsberry, who plays Angelica Schuyler. Quote, we have an opportunity to reclaim a history that some of us don't necessarily think is our own. Then Manuel Miranda has even said that he is, quote, totally open to women playing the Founding Fathers. On a different subject, there are actually quite a few historical inaccuracies in the musical. Hamilton and Angelica Schuyler had a very close relationship, but they were not romantically involved. Schuyler was actually already married at the time she met Alexander at her sister's wedding and was a mother of two children. She actually wound up having eight children. And her father, Philip Schuyler, actually had a total of 15 children. Also, Aaron Burr's involvement in Alexander's life is mostly fictionalized. His role in Hamilton's life is overstated, and a lot of their early interactions in the show were actually entirely fictionalized. Aaron Burr says in Act 1, Martha Washington named her feral tomcat after Hamilton, to which Alexander replies, that's true. This, in fact, is not true. The idea that Hamilton was a serial adulterer who had multiple affairs is the biggest lie in this musical. Alexander Hamilton has been mischaracterized as an adulterer for over two centuries, and 
Lots and lots of authors have repeated the story over and over again, even though it's untrue. In Act 2, there's even more historical inaccuracies, potentially due to time constraints and the show's narrative. It is true that John Adams and Hamilton didn't get along, but Adams did not fire Hamilton, as told in the show. Hamilton actually tendered his resignation from his position as Secretary of the Treasury in 1794. Also, Jefferson, Madison, and Burr didn't approach Hamilton about his affair. It was actually James Monroe, Frederick Mullenberg, and Adam Venable who did this in December of 1792. In the song Take a Break, Hamilton's young son, age nine, says, I have a sister, but I want a little brother. The boy actually already had two younger brothers at the time. Alexander published the affair that he had in the Reynolds pamphlet, and the impact of this pamphlet's publication is greatly exaggerated. In the show, George Eaker fires on Philip at the count of seven, when in real life, both men actually refused to fire for over a minute before Eckler shot Phillips in the hip. And like I said earlier, Hamilton called Burr a dangerous man and one who ought to not be trusted with the reins of the government, which I think is really interesting because that's been said about our own president today, oh, for 250 years later. So is Hamilton really the greatest musical of the 21st century, or is it just a cultural phenomenon? You decide. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you watching. See you next time.